Hi, this is Frank Taylor with Nature at Your Door. I'm down here at my pond today, and this is just going to be a quick video to show you a species that I found today, just quite randomly. It's called a fishing spider. Fishing spiders live near ponds and bodies of water, and today I'm going to show you a large female fishing spider, her offspring, and tell you a couple things about it and why they call it fishing spider. So stay tuned for my science story of the day on the fishing spider. Right here in your backyard, you never know what you're gonna find. And there's a make this invasive. It's like dog. Dogwoods are flowering. And I just took a couple swipes in terrestrial environment. Uh, produce seed pollen. And it's So I was actually down here today planting some native grasses. These are switch grasses, which are part of the prairie grass complex that includes big blue stem, little blue stem, Indian grass, and this is switch grass. And I was walking along, I came over to this big patch of grass right here. And let's take a look and zoom in on this guy. I was just walking by and I saw her because she's a female. And I was just amazed. And there she is. Wow, what a spider. And this is the fishing spider. Fishing spiders get their name because they actually will sometimes prey upon organisms in the water. And they can prey upon small tadpoles as well as small fish if they're lucky. Sometimes they'll just skim right across the surface of the water, capture insects and organisms that are caught in that surface water or living on that surface water, like water striders. The fishing spiders can also go underneath water and can go underwater for up to 30 minutes. They can get air bubbles on the sides of their hairy bodies, which form like a little aqualung, can go down underwater and stay underwater for up to 30 minutes and hunt for things like tadpoles. She is huge. Let me pull down some of this stuff. And I don't want to get too close and make her feel uncomfortable. And she is defending this kind of a ball of web. And if you look inside that ball of web, you can see that there's hundreds and hundreds of baby spiders in there. And they're being still right now, but <laughs> Every once in a while, they move. Here's Mama, and she can, you can see how big she is. And inside here are a lot of little baby spiders. It's hard to see the babies because right now they're frozen in place as if they've got a message from Mom. And spiders are very, very sensitive to vibrations. Some of them don't see real well. Some of them have really good eyes, but all of them are very sensitive to vibrations. She's at her nest, and I'm afraid to get any closer than this. You can see that all the babies have now concentrated themselves right in the middle. In my earlier video, they were all spread out, and that is just a mass of spiders. And there's mama guarding them, taking care of them. These spiders are in the group called nursery web spiders. Called nursery web spiders because they keep their offspring in a nursery. And that dark mass right there is the nursery. And that mass is dark because it's made up of individual spiders. So that's the spider nursery. If you think that I'm going to reach out and try to pick up this spider uh, from her web and hold her in my hand, you are sorely mistaken. I'm not going to disturb her. So a female fishing spider will lay her eggs on a uh, web and then roll those eggs up in that web 
into a ball and take them to a safe place where she can guard them and take care of them. So this particular spider decided the safe place was on the top of these tall grasses, which are probably five to six feet tall. And she was just right about eye level. And the eggs hatched and the mother continued to guard them. So she created a web in those grasses where the offspring could be safe while she protected them. The offspring will stay under the mother's protection until they wander off, sometimes after they molt uh, one more time. So the eggs hatched, the little spiderlings came out, they'll stay with their mom under their protection, and you can see them in my video kind of coming together, being real still, and then moving apart, and then coming all back together again, all under guard by mom. So I kept my distance. So these fishing spiders, which are related to wolf spiders, are probably the largest spiders that we have on the East Coast, certainly in the state of Virginia. And they can, with their legs, they can spread about three to four inches across. And if they're on a wall of your house or on a dock or on a, uh, on a wall near the water, they'll sometimes seem even larger than they really are. So here's some tips for identifying a fishing spider. Look for a large hairy spider, of course. Look for that heart-shaped marking right on its back of its cephalothorax. Look for wavy lines on its abdomen. And then look at its eyes if you can. It has two rows of four eyes that curve upward. Different spiders can be identified by their eyes, like this jumping spider. And here's another spider with a different arrangement of eyes. So look carefully at their eyes if you can. So where do you find fishing spiders? Like their name implies, you're gonna find them near bodies of water like this pond. And you'll find them on uh, decks like the one there by the cabin or on docks or on boat. And I just had one of my viewers email me a picture of a wolf or fishing spider that they found on the side of their boat. And they're a little bit terrified of it. The other question lots of people have when they see a spider or a big spider like this one, can it bite? Yeah, they can bite. Can it envenomate? Yes, it can envenomate. And most spiders can. I mean, that's their predators and that's how they hunt. And they bite their prey and inject them with venom and paralyze them and eat them. These aren't particularly aggressive spiders. If you don't mess with them, they won't mess with you. I kept a respectful distance. I could tell when she was getting a little bit anxious or when I was getting too close. The other question is how toxic is this venom to humans? And it's not very toxic. Some people might have an extreme allergic reaction to it as they would to any foreign introduced protein. Some people just have allergic reactions. But in the grand scheme of things, this is not known as one of the poisonous spiders. It's not in the class like the black widow or brown recluse. Thanks for watching Nature in Your Backyard. Hope to see you again soon. And remember, if you like what I do, please subscribe to my channel and share it with friends, teachers, grandchildren, or homeschoolers, as the case may be. And I think they'll enjoy it as well. Thanks for watching.